Hey everyone, it's Ben from Mtron and this is Nick from Mtron and today we're here at the Mainline Dyno facility where we have Chris Alexander's 4G63 powered R32 World Time Attack Challenge Skyline. We're here doing advanced training for Mtron and we brought Nick over here. He's going to be doing a little bit on this car, mainly around the Mtron anti-surge valve and a lot to do with the gear control. So this car, I believe, runs an Albans ST6 transaxle. Yep. And um, look, let's chat about what, what we expect to, uh, to show the guys over the weekend. Yeah, so obviously in World Time Attack, a lot of guys are using you know, high performance gearboxes, motorsport gearboxes like this. So there's a bit of voodoo um, with tuning those gearboxes and reading data and that kind of thing. So we definitely had to have a car with a sequential gearbox here. And this car sort of ticks all the boxes for that. Um, it's air shifted. It's, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a really great platform for us to really show off here. Um, and this type of dyno too, we can actually run the car up and roll the car up and do upshifts and downshifts and really just do a live demonstration to sort of show off how to read the data and actually properly tune these gearboxes. <laughs> And, you know, instead of just looking at log files the whole time of sort of uh, examples of cars and that kind of thing that are typical in most training sessions, we actually have a live example that we can show off some cool things. I think a really good thing here as well was like, Nick, you have so much experience with different transmissions. I know you use a lot of Drenth over there. Yeah. Uh, you've done mm -hmm. a lot of quaffs with, uh, with Will's Pikes Peak car. Right. And yeah. so I guess every transmission has its own characterization and, and, and things you have to do to make them nice and happy. Right. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. It's de it's not cookie cutter. It's, it's a lot like other forms of engine tuning. Like if you were doing not control or you were doing some function where things are relative, like the data will be relative to the hardware that you're using. And that's especially true with this with this kind of stuff. So I, I know a lot of guys when they come across an Mtron for the first time, they're always like, wow, you guys have put a lot of time into the gear control side of it. And especially like, you know, talk mappings a word and, and basically talks a word that gets thrown around so often. And really like how does that translate into you know performance and going fast? Well, um, that's a really good question. Um, it's kind of like the Mtron methodology of all that is, is that if we're going to do any kind of motorsport feature or function at all, whether it's torque control, whether it's gear shift control or anything like that, it has to be, it's, it's, it has to be, be the high best, level. Right? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm trying, I'm trying to be nice about yeah, it, yeah, yeah. but yeah. So, um, and, and that's one of the reasons why the gear shift control is so specific, uh, the control system in the, in the car. So, uh, or in the ECU. So, um, there's a lot of features and functions in it. Um, it's not necessarily so much part of the torque based system. Maybe when you get into the electronic side of things, like when we talk about the R, when we do the R35 GTR on the, on the second year, but, or on the second day, but, um, there's a lot of functions in there for controlling, um, torque reduction, preloading, reintroduction of torque and that kind of thing. And that's very specific actually to the Mtron ECU. And that's something that we need to definitely show dealers or users when they're using these the ccu for sure. yeah it's um and this is what's so great like to actually have this car in particular but then the r35 which the car we're using it's uh it's actually declan uh declan's car and it's such a great thing that can basically live on the dyno we can spend so much time on it the car's happy you can basically sit there with air conditioning on relaxing and we can sure, do all yeah. our you know mm -hmm. all our tmf sort of training and things like that on that right, car, a lot which... different than this thing here so you know we're not going to be doing you know, crazy pulls in this car or anything like that. Really, it's, it's, we have a car here with the hardware that we're trying to do training on. And so we can do a real live demonstration on. Yeah. And then we can look up review of the logs and we can talk about different problems um, that you're trying to uh, fix and achieve that translate into the lap time that you mentioned earlier. That's yeah. going to be really important. Um, for these, for for the people coming to this training too, and so. one of the one of the big ones with Mtron is like the Mtron anti surge valve, and you know a lot of these questions come along. Like we've obviously been doing that for a number of years, and you know we get calls like, hey, we want to run like a basically a, a bleed on the intake with no wastegate for drag applications and things like that, and we're like. Right guys been doing it since 2016 but for sure if you want to jump into it we always had limitations back then with like shooting rear wheels off but obviously turbo technology has come a long way too so that'll be something i think we'll probably explore a little further in yeah the future. for sure this car's got an anti-surge on it it's got a 90 9280 borg uh, borg warner turbo on it which they're prone to surge if you're not using them properly and depending on the hardware setup 
Um, and it's going to be something we're definitely going to demonstrate. And there is definitely that, that voodoo concept there mm -hmm. about setting it up and sort of we've had some dealers install the anti-surge valves because we're sort of known for using the anti-surge valve and not use it properly and over overwhelm themselves with complication of how they think it should work. And it's actually a lot simpler than, it, than, than people realize. It, it's just, you know, the compressor map of the turbo will tell you what the surge line is and that's the area that you should be working in and, and that kind of thing. And it'll be really profound to, to show the dealers that too yeah. on a live demonstration. not going to be two days worth of training on that it's just for sure we, we get to the it. point and, yeah. and we sort of you know get the theory get it move on sort of thing and then prove that it works too for yeah sure. because this yeah, is definitely sure. one of these turbos that if you run it you know in that surge zone it will surge um, and then specific to the applications translating to the lap to the lap times yeah. for, the, for the kind of racing scenario that this car is used in surge is is very bad for um for, for well, the driver. Yeah, the mid, mid corner yeah. sort of half throttle, yeah, exactly. that's where you really come into those issues right. and it becomes mm -hmm. quite. You used to see in, in Japan at their old time attack, you'd see cars mid corner carrying on. It's like, that's just slow. Yeah, right? they're, you know, they're carrying on or the car's bucking and, you know, it's, you know, a standard blow up valve, you, you won't even get to a, a pressure ratio to open it correctly uh, when you're in those part throttle situations, mm -hmm. depending on, on, on those on the turbo that's being used. I know a lot with, uh, with the stuff we do, we talk about um, uh, basically calculated channels and things like that that live in the back end of the ECU. Is this training going to touch on any of that stuff? Potentially, yeah. We'll sort of see where it goes. It's, it's a little bit variable. Every time we do one of these, we have an agenda and we work through it, but it's, it's driven also by the attendees. So we're, you know, we try and keep it casual to some degree where you know, we want feedback from, from the dealers and to talk to them about what the problems, what yeah. problems they need to overcome um, for sure. But yeah, we do have calculated channels in the ECU. The ECU calculates somewhere up, the number's gotta be around 2,500, 2,500 channels or, or yeah. anyways, as it is, uh, which you can leverage for all kinds of different things. Um, there's traction control, there's launch control, there's other forms of torque management. And that's why I think the two cars that we have for the training are gonna be really good examples because we kind of got a very raw example of you know, a pinnacle of motorsport going on. And then we have the R35, which is a heavily integrated torque, torque managed car. So. Yeah, not nah, awesome. So look, definitely looking forward to it. Um, a lot to cover this weekend. If this all goes to plan, hey Nick, let's just keep pumping these out all yep. around the world, mm -hmm. right? Yep, great. So awesome guys, thanks for having us. Thanks.